All right, welcome back to part two of this video. <laughs> the camera was overheating. The camera was so hot, I couldn't touch it anymore. So I took it with me in the pool. I was hot too. All right, now we are back. Refreshed and nice and cool. Okay, here's our new setup. And this is the correct way you should charge your battery from a solar panel without having a proper charge controller. So we have the positive and the negative terminal connected to our solar panel. This one is turned on already. This goes through our leads into a DC to DC buck converter. So um, if you are not familiar with that, I just want to quickly show you how this works. So this is the printout of, I link this down below, it's 20 amp DC to Z DC buck converter step down. That means we can have an input voltage of 6 to 40 volt and can have an output voltage of 1.2 to 36 volt. So it steps it down and the output current can be adjusted up to 20 amps, but they recommend only 15 amps. So basically what we have, we've got the solar side here coming in with 30 volts. 30.5 volts is our input. And on the other side, we have an output of only 3.45 volts. And you can see here on this converter, we've got these two blue little boxes here with a little dial knob on top of them. You probably can better see this here on the printout. There, there it is, there it is. So you can see one is for constant current and the other one is for constant voltage. And this is exactly the method you should use to charge your lithium batteries, regardless what they are. So and how this works is, you measure the voltage here on the output terminals of this DC-DC converter. And then you use a little screwdriver, you watch the voltage here, and I just adjust the constant voltage here. So if I dial it clockwise, you can see the voltage going up. We've got 4 volts now, 5 volts, 6 volts. So it does a very similar job to my benchtop power supply, right? Where I can adjust the voltage. And this one just needs a little screwdriver here. And then you dial these ones up or down. and Again, here we can adjust it to 3.6 volts or close to that, which is the maximum current we want to, or the maximum voltage we want to have on these battery cells. So probably 3.6 volts, that's good enough for me. So we are not overcharging the battery again. Even we are putting 30 volt here into this module, we are getting only 3.6 volt out. If the battery reaches 3.6 volts, it is the same voltage as the module delivers. There's no voltage difference and therefore there's no current flowing anymore. So this module will now recharge the batteries to 3.6 volts and then automatically stops. Okay, we've got now 30 volt here on the input and we've got 3.6 on the output. And we quickly measure our, our battery again, which I think it is still at 3.33. Ah, 3.34, okay, cool, it has charged a little bit, right. Okay, I haven't turned on my circuit breaker yet. I will do this right now, there we go. And as you can see, you cannot see anything, which is always good because it means either it is not working at all or everything is working as designed. If you have smoke or explosion somewhere, little flames coming out of this inverter, you've done something wrong. <laughs> All right, and let's measure the current, what we are getting here now into our batteries. So, and we can see we're getting 10.6 amps into the batteries. Well, before, when we charged directly from the solar panel, we got only 8 amps. But this was the unsafe method because we needed to monitor and control the voltage of these batteries, which we don't need to anymore because we've got this little guy inside here. So how do we get 10 amps out of an 8 amp solar panel? Well, DC to DC conversion. This is direct current to direct current conversion. Because we are going in here with a higher voltage and coming out with a much lower voltage, we, the module actually increases the current on the output. See, we are getting only, I'm measuring here at the input now of the module and we're getting only 1.64 amps. So 1.64 amps going into the module, but 10 amps getting coming out. That is great, right? 
10 amps into the battery, much better. That's five times more than my power supply here. And this is the setup I have used to recharge the battery so far. Okay, and if you do the quick maths now for the input, we've got the voltage of 30 volts times 1.1.63. This is like 50 watts, 48.9, 50 watts coming from the solar panel now into the buck converter. Well, the solar panel can do 220 watts. We've got 3.6 volts times times 10.8 6 volts 39 watts only. So this is our input voltage 30 volt times 1.6 amps which are coming from the solar panel into the buck converter and on the output we get 3.6 volts and 10.8 amps which is 39 watts. And you can see the difference 50 watts input 39 volts 39 watts output the rest is going oh yeah into heat and you can see this here on the we've got 55 degrees here on the cooler device you can actually switch this over to Fahrenheit for people watching in the US 130 degrees Fahrenheit it is so around 50 60 degrees See, there are some hot spots, of course, in there, 140, 145. So these ones are getting pretty hot. And this is only 10 amp at the moment output. But as per the specs, we can do 20 amps. So how do we get the 20 amps now? So we need to increase the voltage on the output here to push more electrons into the battery. I have to be careful not to go over 20 amps because otherwise we start some um, explosions in here, some little smoke coming out of somewhere. And we don't want that. So 10.8 at the moment, and I'm increasing the voltage slightly here on the output, and you can watch the current. Okay, a different camera, the GoPro is empty. All right, you can already see, you can already see I've increased to 13 amps, and if I just increase the voltage again, 16.8, 17.8, yeah, increasing more and more and more. No, we cannot go any further. And I can already hear a little humming now coming out of this device here. I think we are reaching the maximum efficiency or the maximum <laughs> power that this one can deliver. 17.2 amps, but really not bad, right? And we now have an output voltage here of the bus buck converter of 3.67 volts. So actually over what the batteries can take, you know, I'm overcharging the battery, right? Well, as you know, not really, because when I measure directly at the battery side, you will see we still have the 3.34, I would guess. Yes. Again, the batteries are so huge, they absorb all the energy without problem. But in this case, I would need to monitor the voltage of the battery now, because the output voltage on the output voltage. Yeah, I just turned off the circuit breaker and the output voltage of the DC converter is 4.37 volts. Another voltage difference of the DC buck converter to the batteries is high enough to push 17 amps. And here on the input we now have 2.8 amps coming from the solar panel. Times 2.8 amps. We've got 80 watts now out of the solar panel, so we are still not maxing out the solar panel of 220 watts. Yeah, and now we've got temperatures of over 170 degrees Fahrenheit, which is already a lot in Celsius, over 70 degrees. And well, now you need active cooling, 90 degrees here inside this electronic. So if you leave it running like this for half an hour, it probably will die. See these, these coolers they put on here, they are very minimalistic. You should have much better cooling. I usually use a 12 volt computer fan for that, running from the solar battery as well, to actively cool this buck converter down. And then you can, you can actually draw then 17 amps continuously without problem. Okay, I'll just turn this off. I don't want to destroy my buck converter. All right, guys, we're almost done. And as the last method, I want to show you using our self-made um, ATX computer power supply modified with these terminals here. So I'm using the ground in the black one and the positive into the... Oh, oh that was hot. And I used the positive terminal in the plus 12 volt. And we plug this in and we just 
turn this one on. There's no smoke coming, this is good. The fan is still running, so we're not overloading this one. Let's see how much amps we are getting with our power supply. 17 amps. There we go. But again here on the input side we are pushing only 7 amps into the buck converter but getting 17 out of it. So we're making a plus of 10 amps. And this is again we've got a higher potential voltage here on the input of 12 volt and then convert this one down to only 4.3 volts. This is still the increased voltage. I haven't dialed it back down to 3.6 yet. So, and this is the method I'm using because you cannot use this, you cannot connect your batteries directly into this power supply. It would recognize it as a short and would turn off for safety reasons. This one doesn't, it just limits the power to 2 amps, but this is a different purpose power supply. You know, this is for a computer and the power supply is built to just turn off if it detects a short. But then again, you can get these buck converters here for $6.50, including shipping from China directly. I bought several of them straight away. And you put them in between and you can easily charge your battery from a power supply or directly from a solar panel, regardless what it is. Set your output voltage to 3.6 volt or 3.5 volt, whatever you want to charge your battery with. And then leave it all set up. It will charge happily your battery cells. Again, from a safety perspective, this one is not a safety device. If this one is faulty and puts through the whole power from the solar panel or from the power supply into your battery and you are not there to observe that, to monitor that, it could destroy your batteries and worse. So these ones are not 100% safe. You should always have your battery management system set up with your batteries before you start charging them. But this is good enough if you want to start with this, if you can monitor the system from time to time. Whew. Guys, if you are still watching, congratulations, you made it. This was a lot of information to absorb now. So this gives you a broad overview of what I'm doing right now to charge these batteries here with a buck converter from the solar panel directly. But the correct method would be to use a solar charge controller in which you can set the maximum voltage of your battery pack and of course a battery management system which checks all the single cells in your battery pack. And if one of them goes over voltage, it disconnects the whole charging. So this is the correct method. You set your maximum voltage in here and this one is your safety net. This observes the maximum voltage of each individual cell. But I hope all these methods I show you today gives you a little bit more insight and help you to understand how battery charging works in general. Again, this is not the safest way to do it, but it's a good start point. And if you can observe the voltage of your batteries, if you can monitor them, if you can measure everything from time to time, you'll be fine. Just make sure you fully understand what you're doing. And of course, take your time. Think it through these batteries 2240 ampere hours and there will be the same 2000 ampere hours coming from the Carlotta very soon <laughs> and by the way thank you so much for posting these links where you can find more information about the AS Carlotta okay guys as always thank you so much for watching thanks for all your support here on the channel all your comments I hope this all makes sense and didn't confuse you if you have any more questions if you want to see a more detailed video on a certain method I'm more than happy to do that leave all your comments all your questions down below as always okay guys thank you so much again and see you soon bye bye